Mudbijo Beach, Queensland, Australia, was renowned for its stunning coastal beauty, with the azure waters of the Pacific Ocean lapping against its golden sands. On a sunny day, the beach was a magnet for surfers and beachgoers, seeking the thrill of riding the waves. Among the sun-kissed crowd was a 17-year-old surfer named Cooper Murphy, who was eager to conquer the surf and savor the exhilaration of the open sea. Cooper was a seasoned surfer, and his passion for riding the waves was a defining aspect of his young life. The endless expanse of the ocean, with its unpredictable and powerful waves, drew him like a siren's call. As he waxed his board on the shore and looked out at the waves, his heart raced with the anticipation of another epic surf session. The beach was alive with the joyous laughter of families and friends, but Cooper was ready to plunge into the ocean alone. With his surfboard under his arm, he ventured into the water, determined to ride the waves at a familiar spot he had always loved. However, beneath the surface of the seemingly tranquil ocean, danger lurked. In the depths, a bull shark prowled drawn by the scent of fish and the promise of an easy meal. Bull sharks were known for their aggressive nature and the ability to adapt to various environments, including shallow coastal waters. Cooper, blissfully unaware of the predator in the water, began to paddle out beyond the breakers. His muscles worked in harmony with the rhythm of the waves as he sought the perfect wave to ride. As he scanned the horizon for the ideal wave, the bull shark approached with sinister intent. With a sudden violent surge, the shark lunged from the depths and clamped its powerful jaws around Cooper's arm. The searing pain shot through Cooper's body, and the taste of salt water mixed with the metallic tang of blood in his mouth. Cooper's survival instinct kicked in as he fought to escape the shark's grip. With every ounce of strength and resolve, he struggled to escape the predator's deadly hold. The struggle unfolded beneath the surface, a relentless battle for life in the heart of the ocean. Cooper's ordeal unfolded just beyond the shore, a scene hidden from the view of the beachgoers. As he grappled with the shark, the surfers and sunbathers remained unaware of the life-and-death struggle in the depths. During the battle, Cooper's strength began to wane. The pain in his injured arm was excruciating, and the relentless pull of the shark threatened to drag him further into the depths. The shark, with its unwavering determination, seemed an impossible adversary. Cooper's life hung in the balance as he fought to stay afloat and free himself from the shark's grip. Each passing moment brought him closer to exhaustion, and the need for immediate rescue became increasingly urgent. The beachgoers and fellow surfers, joyful pursuits disrupted by the drama unfolding beyond their view, remained oblivious to Cooper's plight. The lifeguards on the beach, however, were on high alert, ever watchful for signs of distress in the water. In the distance, the lifeguard spotted a frantic commotion in the water. The tumultuous struggle between Cooper and the bull shark was now visible, and it was clear that a dire situation had unfolded. Without hesitation, they launched into action, rushing to the scene to provide the much-needed assistance. With the help of the lifeguards, Cooper was pulled from the clutches of the bull shark and safely brought back to the shore. The shark, its predatory mission thwarted, retreated into the ocean's depths. Cooper's face was contorted with pain, but the relief of being on solid ground was palpable. The beach, once filled with laughter and sun-soaked serenity, now held a sobered crowd. As Cooper was rushed to the hospital, his injured arm a testament to the dangerous encounter, the beachgoers were left to contemplate the fragility of human life in the face of nature's tremendous power. At the hospital, Cooper underwent surgery to repair the extensive damage to his arm. The medical team worked tirelessly to mend his injuries, their efforts a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of adversity. Cooper, with the support of his family and dedicated medical professionals, embarked on a challenging recovery journey. Cooper's story, one of survival and resilience, served as a stark reminder of the inherent risks of swimming and surfing in areas where sharks are known to frequent. The incident at Mudby Joe Beach underscored the importance of remaining vigilant and informed about the presence of sharks in the waters. The ocean, with its beauty and majesty, harbored a world of wonder and peril. Regardless of the problems and anxieties we face today, nothing compares to the terror of being in a life-or-death scenario, especially one that is deadly and excruciating. 
In April 1974, Kawil Ladan was newly employed as a lifeguard at Mogadishu's well-known beach. Mogadishu is a flourishing city in the African country of Somalia. Rumors of deadly sharks lurking in the beach waters and ocean had spread like wildfire at the time. Some unfortunate tourists were previously killed by these claimed sharks, their bodies covered with ghastly shark bite injuries. Although these cases were not confirmed, the fear and tension surrounding the beach were apparent. Cowell was charged as a recruit with protecting the safety of beachgoers and the environment. As a lifeguard, he had the privilege of visiting the beach for free at any time. He quickly grew infatuated with the breathtaking surroundings, which included a mix of warm beach air and chilly ocean waves that established a calming ambience against his skin. Cowell valued his job as a lifeguard, diligently assuring everyone's safety and rescuing those in difficulty in the ocean. There were no huge incidents to deal with for a while, which made him even more enthusiastic about his job. He appreciated the opportunity to do what he loved in such a comfortable and relaxing setting. One day, Kawil was at the beach on a day off, wrapping up some unfinished business for the next day. When he was done, he spent several hours alone on the beach. He removed his outerwear and sat under an umbrella, eager to soak in the lovely view. The day was overcast and a gray mist blanketed the sky, hiding the blue sea. However, the beach refused to surrender its vibrancy, even amid the mist. With the day winding down, Cowell decided to go on a little adventure by taking a boat ride into the alluring ocean, adding the perfect finishing touch to his relaxing day. Before setting off, he noticed another lifeguard who had also dropped by to attend to some work. The two exchanged greetings, briefly acknowledging each other's presence before Cowell set out on his boat while his companion did his duties. As Cowell paddled through the enchanting ocean waters, he immersed his hands in the refreshingly chilly liquid, relishing its tranquility. Memories of his childhood days flooded his mind, where beach visits with his family were unrestricted and full of joy. His excitement peaked as the sun on the beach became brighter, radiantly reflecting the sea's surface. Kawil had no idea that previous stories of danger lurking in these waters would soon become his reality. Unknown to him, a 13-foot tiger shark had taken charge of this ocean area. Due to the lack of marine life in the area, this predator had grown into an even more deadly force, driven by an insatiable hunger to feast on anything that crossed its path. The cold-blooded behemoth fixed its gaze on the boat, ready to strike, sensing the presence of prospective prey. Cowell was easily paddling through the ocean when his voyage was unexpectedly cut short by the persistent jostling of his canoe, leaving him puzzled and searching for answers. The boat capsized before he understood the situation, releasing him into the corrosive waters below. Panic did not take over because he knew how to swim, but his mind was filled with questions about what had caused his boat to capsize. A sharp, searing pain rushed through Cowell's legs, cutting through the water's serenity as he began swimming toward his upturned boat to right it and resume his journey back. He let out a series of terrifying screams, the echoes of which could be heard deep into the vast ocean. Kawil instinctively plunged his head underneath, adrenaline running through his veins to find the source of his suffering. What he saw in front of him defied belief and pounded his heart. Nearby was a shark its blunt head and streamlined body ready to ravage his right legs with its serrated coxcomb-shaped teeth. Struggling against the excruciating pain, he frantically kicked with his remaining leg, desperately trying to fend off the relentless predator. Simultaneously, his cries for help pierced the vast expanse of water, his voice carrying the hope that the other lifeguard, not too far away, would hear his distress call and rush to his rescue. Kawil was dismayed that his kicks had little effect on the relentless shark. He ached desperately for his boat paddle, but remained out of reach. In a last-ditch effort to escape the sea creature's gnawing jaws, he lowered himself into the ocean's depths and punched it. Each strike intensified the pain, driving the razor-sharp teeth deeper into his flesh. As his blood blended with the water, the ocean became a whirling backdrop of red, producing a horrific sight. Consciousness gradually waned, compelling Cowell to surrender to the shadows, but he knew he wouldn't wake up to the world if he let himself sleep, so he kept pushing the shark away and screaming for help. He pushed the shark away with all his might, 
summoning every ounce of power he had left while screaming for assistance, hoping that someone would rescue him from this horrifying encounter. Thankfully, the other lifeguard had heard Cowell's cries and had paddled quickly towards him, propelled by the growing shouts and the horrifying sight unfolding before his eyes. Recognizing the urgency, he pushed through the water, propelled by an adrenaline rush to save Cowell. Cowell fought against the encroaching unconsciousness, knowing the deadly tiger shark's jaws were poised to seize him as prey. The moment hung in the balance as he glanced into the shark's depths, an uncompromising reminder of his nearing death. Suddenly, gunshots rang out across the ocean, relieving the tension as the lifeguard aimed ruthlessly at the sea where the shark had bound Kawil. The bullets prompted the deadly predator to release its grip and escape into the depths, potentially injured by the bullets. The lifeguard heroically plunged into the ocean waters, dragging Cowell into the boat's safety. Knowing the severity of Cowell's injuries, he immediately alerted the ambulance and requested additional assistance to secure the area. The ambulance arrived minutes after reaching the shore and transported him to a specialized hospital, ready to fight for his life. The following treatments were nothing short of aggressive, including complex surgeries and several injections. Kawil was resuscitated after a long battle, but the severity of his injuries forced the doctors to amputate his right leg, an awful loss that would haunt him for the rest of his life. It was a close call, a nightmare that haunted Kawil Ladan. His case marked the start of more shark attack cases on the beaches of Mogadishu, Somalia, during the period. On a fateful day in Port Harbor, a charming coastal town in the Pacific Northwest, the tranquil atmosphere was shattered by a devastating incident that would leave a lasting impact on the community. October 12, 1988, would forever be etched in the townspeople's memories as they grappled with the shocking turn of events that unfolded within the confines of the local aquarium. The community was excited as news of the eagerly anticipated aquarium tour spread through Port Harbor High School. As part of a particular educational program, a group of students, including Luke Thompson, had been selected to visit the newly renovated Port Harbor Marine Discovery Center. An enthusiastic 18-year-old student interested in marine life, Luke eagerly looked forward to the day's adventure. Amid the crisp morning air, Luke joined his classmates on a bus bound for the Marine Center. The excitement in the air was palpable as the students chatted animatedly, their anticipation building with each passing minute. Port Harbor was known for its close-knit community and deep connection to the sea, making the Marine Center a source of pride for the town. The group arrived at the Marine Center, a state-of-the-art facility showcasing various marine species and ecosystems. Luke's heart raced with excitement and curiosity as they embarked on a guided tour led by marine biologist Dr. Emily Harris. Dr. Harris, a renowned expert in her field, was known for her passion and dedication to marine conservation. The tour led the students through captivating exhibits, each offering a glimpse into the diverse underwater world. Luke marveled at the vibrant coral reefs, exotic fish species, and interactive touch tanks that allowed them to experience marine life up close, however. The highlight of the tour, the shark enclosure, held the most allure. As the group gathered around the imposing shark enclosure, Dr. Harris began to share insights about the various shark species housed within its glass walls. She explained the importance of dispelling myths surrounding sharks and emphasized their vital role in maintaining the ocean's delicate balance. Despite the awe-inspiring nature of the exhibit, a sense of reverence and respect for these apex predators permeated the air. The centerpiece of the shark enclosure was a massive tank that housed a variety of shark species, including nurse sharks, leopard sharks, and the elusive wabagong shark. Luke's rapt attention accompanied Dr. Harris's explanations, his fascination growing with each new piece of information. The atmosphere was a mixture of awe and trepidation as the students marveled at these powerful creatures while keeping a safe distance. However, tragedy struck in an unthinkable instant that would forever mar the day's events. A loud splash disrupted the tranquil environment as Luke and his classmates stood engrossed in the display. The students' gasps of shock filled the air as they turned to witness a horrific scene unfold before them. Luke Thompson had inexplicably fallen into the shark enclosure, 
The water erupted in a chaotic frenzy as the Wabagong shark, a master of camouflage, darted toward Luke with a sudden burst of aggression. The peaceful atmosphere shattered, replaced by sheer panic and chaos, as Luke and his classmates watched in disbelief. Dr. Harris's urgent commands filled the air as she directed the students to retreat to a safe distance, the urgency of the situation clear in her voice. The Wabagong shark, driven by instinct and confusion, circled Luke before launching a swift and deadly attack. The peaceful waters transformed into a vortex of violence in seconds as the shark's powerful jaws clamped down on Luke's leg. The horrifying sight left the students frozen in shock, their cries of terror echoing throughout the Marine Center. Dr. Harris and her team swiftly mobilized to contain the situation employing emergency protocols to separate the shark from Luke. The following harrowing minutes felt like an eternity as the staff grappled with the crisis. Despite their heroic efforts, the attack inflicted severe injuries, and the paramedics were called to the scene. As the ambulance arrived and Luke was rushed to the hospital, the Marine Center fell into a heavy silence, the weight of the tragic incident hanging in the air. The once vibrant atmosphere was replaced by somber reflection, as Luke's classmates struggled to process the horrifying events. The small town of Port Harbor was thrust into a state of shock as news of the fatal shark attack spread like wildfire. The tight-knit community mourned the loss of Luke, a bright and promising student, and grappled with the reality of the inherent risks associated with working closely with marine life. The incident served as a poignant reminder of the unpredictable nature of the sea, and the fragile boundary between admiration and danger. The Port Harbor Marine Discovery Center faced scrutiny and investigation in the aftermath, with safety protocols and enclosure designs under intense scrutiny. The tragedy prompted the re-evaluation of safety measures within the facility to prevent future incidents. The Marine Center collaborated with experts in the field to implement enhanced protocols, ensuring the well-being of staff members and visitors while maintaining their commitment to educating the public about marine conservation. Luke's memory lingered on in the hearts of his classmates, deeply affected by the traumatic events of that day. The memory of the attack cast a shadow over their enthusiasm for marine life, a stark reminder of the potential risks accompanying the ocean's awe-inspiring beauty. Despite the chilling encounter, Luke's spirit and passion remained alive in the minds of those who knew him. Ultimately, the tragic shark attack remained a poignant chapter in Port Harbor's history. The Marine Center's transformation into a beacon of education and safety was a testament to the town's resilience and the enduring legacy of Luke's spirit. As the ocean's mysteries continued to captivate and intrigue, the memory of that harrowing day served as a reminder that the sea's beauty and power must always be approached with a profound sense of respect and responsibility. 2014, the golden California sun bathed Klon Mitt Beach in a warm and inviting glow. This stretch of coastline had long been a haven for surfers and beachgoers, its pristine sands and rolling waves making it a popular spot for those seeking the thrill of the ocean. Jack White, a seasoned surfer from California, was drawn to the siren call of Klon Mitt Beach. Jack arrived that day with a sense of purpose and excitement, his surfboard ready to take on the waves that had beckoned him. He was no stranger to the power of the sea, and the exhilaration of riding its crests had become an integral part of his life. His girlfriend Lily watched by his side with admiration and apprehension. The beach was a place they often visited together, but today she had decided not to join Jack in the water. The waves seemed more significant and imposing than usual, and unease had settled within her. As he prepared to paddle out, she wished him luck her heart filled with love and worry. Wearing a well-worn wetsuit, Jack strode purposefully into the water, the waves lapping at his feet. The familiar scent of salt and seaweed filled his nostrils as he pushed through the breaking surf and into the open sea. The ocean was his sanctuary, where he felt most alive, and Klonmit Beach was his canvas. As he rode the first wave, he felt the familiar surge of adrenaline, the thrill of conquering nature's might. The waves that day were robust, their powerful swells offering an exhilarating challenge. Jack's confidence and expertise in the water had earned him respect among the local surf community. But beneath the azure surface of the Pacific, a predator stirred. A great white shark, a leviathan of the deep, 
had detected the vibrations and movements above. Its senses heightened. It sensed an opportunity drawn by the scent of salt and the presence of prey. With a sudden explosive burst of power, the Great White breached the surface, jaws gaping wide, and its immense form cast a sinister shadow over Jack. In a matter of heartbeats, it clamped down on him, its razor-sharp teeth tearing into his flesh, a brutal and devastating attack. The once thriving sea was transformed into a scene of chaos and horror. Jack's world became a nightmare, an underwater battle with a relentless force of nature. With every ounce of his strength, he fought to break free from the jaws of death, the water around him churning into a frenzy of blood and turmoil. Watching from the shore, Lily could scarcely comprehend the horror unfolding. Her heart pounded in her chest as she screamed for help, her voice joining the cacophony of shouts and gasps from horrified onlookers who had witnessed the gruesome attack. Panic spread like wildfire along the beach, and the cries for assistance reached the ears of the lifeguards and coastal guards stationed nearby. The authorities were alerted, and a rescue operation was swiftly launched. But it was a race against time. By the time they reached Jack, it was tragically too late. His lifeless body floated on the surface, surrounded by the crimson evidence of a battle lost. Lily's world had crumbled in those agonizing moments. The man she loved, who had ventured into the waves with a passion that had always filled their days with joy, was now gone. The sun-soaked beach had become a place of unspeakable loss. The laughter and love they had shared forever silenced by the relentless power of the sea. The shock and grief were palpable for those who had witnessed the tragic event. Clonmit Beach, known for its beauty and allure, had been marred by a grim reminder of the ocean's capacity for both wonder and devastation. The surfing community mourned the loss of one of their own, a reminder of the inherent risks in their beloved pursuit. In the days and weeks that followed, the coastal community came together to support Lily and to reflect on the importance of safety and vigilance when enjoying the ocean. The incident was a stark reminder that preparation and awareness were paramount in the face of nature's unforgiving forces. Lily, forever marked by the tragedy, grappled with the profound grief of losing Jack. Her heart was a shattered vessel, and the waves that once brought them joy now carried the weight of sorrow. The memories of their shared adventures, laughter, and love became bittersweet treasures cherished and mourned equally. Clonmit Beach, despite the tragedy, remained a place of natural beauty and allure, where the sun continued to warm the sand and the waves continued to whisper their secrets. But for those who had been present on that fateful day, the memory of Jack's fatal encounter with the great white shark would forever be etched into the history and the heart of this coastal haven, a reminder of the powerful and unpredictable forces that both captivate and humble those who seek solace and excitement in the arms of the sea. In the heart of Australia's vibrant marine world, the Williams family, consisting of 28-year-old Martin Williams, a former marine biologist, his wife Mia, an adventurous marine photographer, and their two children, Alan and Daisy, embarked on a journey into the depths of the unknown. The year was 1999, and their dream was to explore the mesmerizing world of bull sharks that thrived in the waters off the coast of Point Sampson. Little did they know that this adventure would take a sinister turn into a realm of suspense and terror. The Williams family hailed from a coastal town not far from the Great Barrier Reef. Martin, the patriarch, was a former marine biologist who had spent years studying marine life, gaining a profound understanding of the ocean's ecosystems. His fascination with the underwater world had ignited during his childhood, growing up near the sea. As a father, he had a deep-rooted respect for the creatures that dwelled beneath the waves, which he had instilled in his family over the years. His knowledge and passion for marine biology were matched only by his love for his family. Mia, his wife, was an adventurous spirit who had always been drawn to the ocean. Her camera was her constant companion, capturing the beauty of the underwater world with every click. Her photos had graced numerous marine life magazines, earning her recognition as a passionate advocate for ocean conservation. The allure of the ocean's depths was a siren song to her, and her love for the sea was evident in the vivid images she captured. Their children, Alan and Daisy, had been raised with a deep appreciation for the wonders of the ocean. Their summers were spent exploring the coast and they'd learned to snorkel before they could walk. 
The ocean, with its kaleidoscope of colors and mysterious depths, was their playground, and their curiosity was insatiable. They absorbed their parents' knowledge and passion, growing into young explorers who felt at home beneath the waves. As the Williams family arrived in the small coastal town of Point Sampson, their anticipation was palpable, and they were met with the striking beauty of the Great Barrier Reef. The azure waters and the vibrant coral formations were breathtaking. They couldn't have imagined a more perfect setting for their underwater adventure. Their expedition began with a detailed briefing from a local dive expert, Benjamin. He shared insights about the bull shark's behavior, habitat, and the utmost importance of adhering to safety protocols. With their wetsuits on and hearts racing with excitement, the Williams family set out in a sturdy dive boat that took them to a secret location known only to a few brave souls. As the family descended into the depths of the ocean, they marveled at the vibrant coral reef formations surrounding them. The colors were more vivid than any of their previous dives, and the crystal clear water provided a mesmerizing view of marine life. Schools of fish darted through the corals, and the occasional sea turtle gracefully glided by. It was a mesmerizing underwater world, and for the Williams family, it was a dream come true. But their thrill soon turned into an icy grip of terror when, out of the deep blue, two colossal bull sharks emerged. Their gray bodies, sleek and muscular, moved gracefully through the water. Their cold, unblinking eyes sent chills down the spines of the Williams family. The bull sharks, powerful apex predators, had appeared on the scene, and the family was now face to face with the untamed. These formidable creatures, known for their aggressive nature, circled the Williams family with an unsettling curiosity. The family's pulse quickened as they clung to the rocky cave's entrance. Martin, drawing on his years of experience, took the lead, guiding his family into forming a defensive circle. They watched the sharks every move, keeping a close eye on their surroundings. The minutes stretched into hours as they waited for an opportunity to slowly retreat to the surface. The suspense was palpable as the Williams family inched their way back to safety. The sharks continued to circle, their black eyes locked onto the family, their razor-sharp teeth glinting in the filtered sunlight. In the final moments of their harrowing encounter as the Williams family made their escape, one of the bull sharks lunged at Martin. Its teeth went straight through his oxygen tank, causing a sudden rush of bubbles and a sharp decrease in his air supply. Panic threatened to engulf him as his oxygen levels plummeted, and he knew that the injury could be life-threatening. With his air running out rapidly, Martin signaled to his family to continue their ascent while he fought to control his breathing and keep his wits about him. The bull shark, seemingly satisfied with its bold move, retreated to the depths, leaving Martin to deal with the immediate crisis. In the end, after a nerve-wracking and exhausting struggle, Martin managed to surface with his family. He was injured, his oxygen tank damaged, but their survival was nothing short of miraculous. The Williams family returned home, their adventure etched in their memories as a tale of suspense and survival. Martin's injury served as a stark reminder of the perils of the deep, and they all shared a profound sense of awe and respect for the untamed world beneath the waves. The Sandbill Beach in Ireland had always been a serene and picturesque haven for families, looking to escape the hustle and bustle of everyday life. On a crisp October morning, the sun bathed the shore in a warm golden glow, promising a perfect day for relaxation. Felix Muller, a 30-year-old surfer, couldn't resist the call of the waves, and he decided it was the ideal day to introduce his favorite sport to his family. With his wife Emma and their three-year-old daughter Lily, Felix arrived at the beach. They set up beneath a large parasol, the sound of the waves providing a soothing backdrop to their laughter and chatter. As Felix waxed his surfboard and secured his wetsuit, he couldn't help but smile at the idyllic scene unfolding before him. Emma watched Felix with a mixture of pride and concern. She had always admired her husband's love for the ocean, but had never fully embraced his passion for surfing. Today, she let Felix enjoy himself, trusting he would return safely to their little family on the shore. Felix paddled into the glistening waters while Lily played in the surrounding sand. He enjoyed the rush of the ocean and the tempting waves. He had spent much time riding the waves, evident in his every fluid movement and quiet assurance. 
The Muller family was enjoying the straightforward pleasures of life by the sea, and it was an image of unadulterated bliss. But the calmness vanished in an instant. A great white shark with its dorsal fin slicing through the water like a knife came from the depths like a terrifying shadow. Felix was afraid as the creature pounced at him with open teeth. At that terrifying moment, he became aware of the threat, and his instincts took over. The shark's razor-sharp teeth clamped down on Felix's surfboard, just inches away from his body. The force of the attack sent him tumbling into the water. The world turned into a chaos of bubbles and churning waves as Felix fought to free his leg from the wreckage of his board. Emma and Lily watched in horror on the shore as their tranquil day unraveled. The crashing waves drowned out Emma's screams of terror, but her frantic gestures and wide-eyed desperation conveyed the situation's urgency. Felix knew he was in a fight for his life. Blood clouded the water around him as the shark's teeth ripped through his surfboard and grazed his leg. Pain surged through him, but he couldn't afford to succumb to it. He freed his leg with sheer determination and began swimming away from the shark's initial strike zone. After being briefly stopped, the great white shark circled, keeping its dead eyes fixed on its prey. Felix's thoughts raced, trying to remember every survival skill he had ever learned, while his heart raced as he swam with all the strength he had left. Emma, her eyes wet with tears, knew she had to act. She grabbed Lily's hand and ran toward the Coast Guard security room, just a short distance from the beach. Panic and dread fueled her as she reached the room and dialed 911. Emma's voice quivered in terror as she described the horrific event at Sandbill Beach. The dispatcher reassured her that assistance was approaching, but the following seconds seemed to drag on forever. Felix was still fighting for his life at the time. He created a temporary tourniquet from a piece of his surfboard leash to stop the bleeding from his leg. An unending expanse of water surrounded him, and the far coast appeared out of reach. The minutes turned into hours, and Felix's strength waned. His limbs felt like lead and his vision blurred. Desperation clawed at him. Suddenly, the shadow of the great white shark reappeared beneath him. It circled, its menacing presence a chilling reminder of his peril. In a last-ditch effort, Felix screamed underwater, a guttural, desperate cry that vibrated through the waves. He hoped his family on the shore would hear. It was his only defense against the relentless predator. The shark, momentarily startled, veered away. The emergency response team had arrived at Sandbill Beach, guided by Emma's frantic directions. They launched a boat and sped toward the scene, their searchlights cutting through the darkening water. Felix kept swimming toward the far shoreline as his power quickly diminished. The shark's circling became increasingly irregular because it could not approach its prey for the kill. When Felix thought he could no longer continue, the rescue boat appeared, and powerful hands lifted him from the water. His body was battered, his leg mangled, but he was alive. After being stopped in its pursuit, the great white shark vanished into the depths leaving the Mueller family with a terrifying experience that would follow them for years. As Felix lay in the rescue boat, gasping for breath and gripping his makeshift tourniquet, he knew he had been given a second chance at life. The jaws of a predator had tested the bond between him and his family, and it had emerged stronger than ever. Emma hugged Lily closely as they returned to the shore, her eyes welling with tears. She had never experienced such terror before, and she was aware that the trauma of that day would last. She cast a loving, grateful glance at Felix's way as she made a quiet pledge to herself and their daughter. Felix would never again go surfing. He would no longer let the lure of the waters entice him because his family had already suffered enough. They had been given a horrifying glimpse of the erratic harshness of nature, and they didn't want to take that chance again. As the rescue boat sped back to the safety of the shore, the setting sun cast a crimson hue on the horizon. It was a reminder that even in the face of danger, there was beauty to be found. And for the Muller family, the beauty they cherished most was the precious gift of life itself. The sun hung low on the horizon, casting a warm golden hue over Hurdy Beach, located on the outskirts of southern Sydney, Australia. It was the kind of picturesque evening that drew surfers from near and far to its inviting waves. Among them was Daniel Mitchell, a 29-year-old surfer who had always felt a deep connection to the sea. 
Hurdy Beach was a gem of a location known for its relatively uncrowded waves and the pristine, untouched beauty of its shoreline. Rugged cliffs flanked the beach, their weathered faces standing sentinel against the relentless tides. Seagulls soared in the sky, and the rhythmic crash of the surf created a mesmerizing symphony. Daniel was an experienced surfer, and the thrill of riding the waves was a passion that ran deep in his veins. Today, he ventured out alone, paddling his board about 100 meters from the shore. The waves were inviting, their frothy peaks promising an exhilarating ride, and he couldn't resist their call. With each powerful stroke, Daniel propelled himself further from the safety of the shoreline. With the taste of salt on his lips and the crisp sea breeze in his hair, he felt a profound sense of freedom. Hurdy Beach had always been a sanctuary for him, where the world's problems disappeared in the face of the ocean's endless horizon. But on this fateful evening, the tranquil facade of the sea held a lurking danger. Beneath the surface, a shadowy figure moved with predatory grace. It was a bull shark, drawn to the commotion of surfers and the promise of an easy meal. Its sleek form glided stealthily through the water, unseen by those on the surface. The other surfers out in the water were oblivious to the approaching danger, each immersed in their pursuit of the perfect wave. As Daniel scanned the horizon for the next set, the shark closed the distance, its predatory instincts honed to perfection. In a sudden, brutal surge, the bull shark lunged from the depths, jaws agape, and clamped down on Daniel's thigh. The force of the attack was staggering, and the vastness of the ocean swallowed Daniel's agonized cry. His board was sent careening through the waves as he was pulled underwater, trapped by the relentless predator. The other surfers, their senses jolted by the sudden violence, sprang into action. With a mixture of fear and adrenaline, they fought through the churning surf, reaching for Daniel's flailing form. Desperation and determination fueled their efforts as they struggled to free him from the shark's deadly grip. Back on the beach, the scene had transformed from one of idyllic serenity to one of panic and chaos. Onlookers and fellow beachgoers, their voices rising in frantic alarm, watched in horror as the struggle unfolded. Emergency services were called, and the desperate plea for help resounded. The battle beneath the waves raged, a fierce contest of strength, survival, and primal instinct. Daniel, his vision blurred by the salt water, fought to maintain his composure in the face of unimaginable pain. The shark's grip on his thigh was unyielding, its teeth sinking more profoundly with each moment. As the surfers grappled with the shark, the sheer power of the predator became evident. Its massive body, well suited for the hunt, thrashed and writhed, refusing to relinquish its prey. With each passing second, the clock ticked down on Daniel's chances of survival. His breath grew shallow, and his strength waned as he continued to fight for his life. The surfers pulled and tugged, their faces etched with determination. But the shark remained an implacable foe. Amid the struggle, the first responders arrived on the scene. Lifeguards and paramedics, armed with equipment and expertise, dove into the water to aid in the rescue effort. Professional rescuers joined the surfers' hands, united in their mission to free Daniel from the shark's grip. The water was stained with blood, a grim testament to the ferocity of the battle unfolding. Despite the combined efforts of the rescuers, time had not been on Daniel's side. His body, battered and broken, had endured too much. The shark's relentless assault had taken its toll, and as they finally succeeded in prying the predator away, it was too late. Daniel's life had slipped away beneath the waves. In the aftermath of the tragedy, Daniel Mitchell's family grieved the loss of their beloved son and brother. The beach, with its untouched beauty, remained a place of memories and mourning. The bull shark, having returned to the depths, continued to roam the mysterious world of the ocean, a silent and enigmatic predator. Hurdy Beach, a haven for surfers and beachgoers, would always be different. The sea, with its ever-shifting moods, held a new layer of complexity. Daniel Mitchell's story, a tale of courage and the fragility of life in the face of nature's incredible power, became an unhappy chapter in the annals of the ocean's history. It's always disheartening when an enjoyable occasion turns into an absolute nightmare. In the early years of the Western Cape, South Africa, the town of Gansby drew a lot of tourists because of its amazing natural beauty and the immense ocean waters that churned with majestic waves, especially during the summer. 
However, this wonderful town was also known for being home to one of the deadliest shark species, the great white shark. In present times, people are safely lowered into cages to experience a personal encounter with these majestic creatures, ensuring their protection from harm. However, in the past, such safety measures were not yet established. Lucas Harold, a rising Canadian journalist who enjoyed seeking thrilling experiences and documenting his travels, was usually drawn to tours involving these circumstances. Along with his skills as a good surfer, he had taken part in several surfing adventures throughout several oceans. During a family holiday to the Western Cape, South Africa, Gansby became an appealing location for Lucas and his family. On the planned day of their Gansby tour, as Lucas's family packed their beach essentials to indulge in the breathtaking waterscape, Lucas made sure to bring along his cherished surfing equipment as he eagerly anticipated the chance to catch exhilarating waves, joining other thrill-seeking tourists who shared his passion. In contrast, his family packed their beach stuff and clothing that they would wear and enjoyed the beautiful view of the waters as Lucas surfed with the other tourists who would also show up. They were soon on their way, and the Herald's cab arrived at their destination. Although rumors about awful events in the town's ocean waters were present at the time, such worrying news quickly faded into the background, unable to overshadow the excitement of their visit. The presence of vigilant lifeguards and security staff gave reassurance, ensuring prompt assistance in the event of any serious incidents. Once settled in their designated spot, Lucas and his family quickly changed into their beach clothing and joined the other beachgoers, enjoying the wonderful surroundings. They unloaded their picnic items and set up their beach umbrellas, eager to enjoy a relaxing day at the beach. Lucas grew more desire to learn more about the surfing activities as time passed. Seeing the surfers eagerly expecting feedback from the beach staff, he entered their ranks, greeting the crew and waiting his turn. The moment arrived and they ventured into the vast ocean waters, ready to seize the majestic waves with much anticipation. Lucas and the others relished the thrilling waves as they set off on their surfing excursion, skillfully riding their boards. Onlookers, including Lucas's family, applauded and delighted in the thrill, captivated by the show of talent and finesse. It was an amazing experience, with the waves providing just the ideal combination of height and beauty to elicit a great sensation of excitement in Lucas. Lucas hovered gracefully with each wave, proving his talent and enjoying every moment. At one time, though, he and the other surfers disappeared into the expanse of a giant wave, poised to burst out into the screaming crowd. However, Lucas did not emerge from the depths this time. His absence caused instant alarm among his wife and children, who examined the waterways, hoping to catch a glimpse of him. Unfortunately, he remained evasive, leaving them unsettled and unsure of his whereabouts. Lucas fought for his life against the unrelenting ocean waves, urgently seeking his surfboard and trying to stay afloat. He fought against the knocking waves that tried to draw him back into the deep blue abyss, determined to reach the safety of the shore. He had no idea that a predator was lurking beneath the surface, monitoring his every move. It wasn't just any predator, it was a great white shark, one of only a handful in Gansby at the time. Lucas couldn't shake the unsettling feeling of disturbance in the water, as if a concealed entity was advancing. He had grown in his ability to notice motions in the water as an experienced swimmer and surfer, especially when they were close up. Curiosity got the best of him, and he dove headfirst, determined to find the source of the dreary currents. What he saw beneath the surface terrified him, his heartbeat thumping so rapidly that it felt like it might burst from his chest. Lucas drove himself upward with energy, breaching the sea's surface and swimming with all his strength toward the crowded shoreline. He used evasive moves to confuse the shark, desperate to outmaneuver the horrific creature. But Lucas's efforts were ineffective in the face of the underwater marvel's agility and speed. A sharp, searing pain went through his legs, just as he was about to reach the safety of the beach and the view of the crowd again, forcing him to scream in agony. The jaws of the great white shark had locked onto his legs, tearing into his flesh with unrelenting force. Lucas's distressed shouts pierced the air in that moment of anxiety, drawing the attention of his alert family and beachgoers. Their faces were filled with horror as they watched the water around Lucas turn red, 
indicating the presence of a crisis. Lucas fought back, fueled by a burst of strength and survival instincts, delivering assertive kicks and punches, trying to break free from the predator's persistent grip. To his disbelief, another great white shark emerged from the depths, drawn by the thick cloud of blood that had now consumed the waters around them. The shark buried its fangs into Lucas's arm with lightning speed, intensifying his frantic calls for help. Fortunately, a bunch of surfers happened to be within range, drawn by the commotion. They moved quickly toward the ensuing disaster. Concurrently, security workers, alerted to the emergency, immediately plunged into the water with their boats, desperate to save Lucas from the jaws of the ongoing threat. Lucas's family, notably his wife, pleaded for assistance, their voices echoing with sorrow. Despite Lucas's brave efforts to repel the relentless sharks, Lucas was overpowered. One of the sharks viciously tore off his leg, forcing Lucas to erupt in a piercing primal scream. As the intense pain overwhelmed him, he drifted unconscious, his body disappearing into the deep crimson-stained waters. The alert surfers arrived at his precise place just in time. Bracing themselves, they rammed their surfboards into the sharks, continuously hitting them until they let go of Lucas's bruised limbs and swam away, carrying his severed leg in their frightening jaws. The security team arrived quickly and efficiently, skillfully piloting their boat to extract Lucas from the dangerous waters. Although Lucas had already lost a large amount of blood, they were able to stop the bleeding and reduce further loss. An awaiting ambulance rushed Lucas away, triggering fear and despair in his wife and children, who ran behind him in frantic desperation. When he arrived at the hospital, his blood type coincidentally matched that of the blood bank, allowing for an instant transfusion as medical personnel dealt with his serious injuries. Lucas's family prayed desperately for his survival, their hearts bleeding with dread and hope. Lucas regained consciousness nearly three days later, much to the relief of his loved ones. However, he became gloomy from that day forward due to losing his leg, a part of his body he cherished the most. The events surrounding his near-death experience and subsequent survival echoed dramatically, ranking among the most terrifying shark attack accounts. It stood as an ominous and deadly reminder of the fragility of life, as well as the great appreciation Lucas and his family felt for his narrow escape from the grasp of the abyss. It also bore the weight of his permanent impairment, a continual reminder of the enduring suffering he would have to bear. Samuel Turner, a seasoned seafarer whose life took a heart-stopping twist on November 15, 2001, off the coast of Eden, Australia. Samuel's years as a commercial fisherman had brought him familiarity with the ebb and flow of the ocean, but little could have prepared him for the gripping ordeal ahead. November 14, 2015 was like any other day on Samuel's maritime route, steering his ship from Batemans Bay to Montague Island and finally reaching the tranquil waters near Eden. With a decade of experience, Samuel was known among his crew for his ability to mend anything, whether the ship's engine or the rigging on deck. As dawn broke on November 15, 2015, Samuel embarked on his routine checks, inspecting the ship's engine meticulously before turning his attention to the pulley systems on deck. These tasks had become his second nature, and his fellow crewmates highly regarded his expertise. He deftly resolved an issue with the pulleys, winning a round of applause from his colleagues. The day unfolded with a sense of normalcy until around 1 p.m., when a commotion on deck drew Samuel's attention again. Crewmates were gathered around the same pulleys he had fixed the day prior, engaged in a heated discussion. Annoyed at the thought of someone tampering with his work, Samuel approached the scene, asserting his authority and demanding space to inspect the pulleys. With a discerning eye, Samuel examined the pulleys and quickly identified the cause of the problem. He worked efficiently, addressing the issue and restoring the pulleys to functioning. Satisfied with his efforts, he descended to the lower decks, pausing to explain the situation to inquisitive apprentice mechanics. However, Samuel's foot became entangled in a loose rope from the pulleys as he walked away. Alarmed, he realized that one of the ropes had been misconnected, rendering the pulley system imbalanced. In the blink of an eye, the loose rope tightened around his ankle, his body jolted off balance, and he was unceremoniously plunged into the ocean. A chaotic whirl of pain followed the shock of impact as Samuel found himself submerged, tangled in the net, and struggling to breathe. 
Amidst his disorientation, he comprehended that the massive force straining the net was a great white shark relentlessly tugging at the entangled fish. His heart raced, his breath came in ragged gasps, and the icy grip of terror tightened around his chest. Summoning adrenaline, Samuel retrieved a small pocket knife, his trembling hands fumbling to cut the rope that bound him. But the thick rope resisted his attempts, leaving him helpless as he desperately struggled to escape its grasp. Panic intensified as he sensed the shark's ominous presence lurking nearby, its eerie shadow circling just beyond his vision. Amidst the chaos and adrenaline, Samuel focused solely on his fight for survival, the world around him a blur of instinct and desperation. Unbeknownst to him, the fish trapped in the net managed to break free, a fleeting stroke of luck that also granted him a slim chance to break free. The universe seemed to hold its breath as Samuel propelled himself towards the shimmering surface, his body driven by sheer willpower. Emerging from the depths, he broke it through the waiter's surface with a gasp that echoed the intensity of his struggle. His shoot of relief and desperation pierced the air, a vocal manifestation of the emotions swirling within him. As he bobbed in the water, his body battered and his strength waning, the crew members sprung into action, responding to the urgency of his situation. A lifeline was swiftly extended, a slender thread connecting Samuel to safety. The crew's determination was palpable as they worked in unison, their combined efforts a testament to human resilience in the face of nature's fury. With each inch of progress, the tension in the air was electric, an invisible bond linking Samuel to his comrades, who refused to let him slip away into the abyss. Yet, even as Samuel was pulled closer to the safety of the ship, danger remained a haunting specter, refusing to be banished. Urgent shouts rang out, piercing through the sounds of crashing waves as a crew member's voice cut through the chaos. Their eyes widened in alarm as they spotted the telltale dorsal fin of the shark, a relentless force of nature closing in with deadly intent. Samuel's heart raced, the adrenaline surging through his veins as he registered the imminent threat. The world around him seemed to slow as he gathered the last remnants of his strength, his survival instincts kicking into overdrive. He propelled himself with every ounce of energy he could muster, his limbs burning with the exertion as he pushed his body to the limit. And then the shark struck again in a heartbeat that stretched into eternity. Its powerful jaws clamped onto Samuel's leg, the force of its bite sending shock waves of pain reverberating through his body. The crushing pressure was relentless, an unyielding grip that threatened to shatter bone and spirit alike. The searing pain was a visceral reminder of his vulnerability in the face of nature's apex predator. Samuel's vision blurred with pain and desperation as the shark's relentless grip held him captive. He fought against the forcey that sought to pull him under his will pour an unbreakable barrier against the abyss. And in that moment of unbearable turmoil, Samuel clung to his determination, his spirit unyielding even as the jaws of the great white threatened to consume him whole. With the combined strength of his crewmates, their muscles straining with determination and a lifeline rapidly descending, Samuel's rescue became a collective effort. As Samuel's body emerged from the water, his breath was ragged, and his heart pounded in his chest. The relentless grip of the shark refused to release its hold quickly, and the struggle intensified as the crew pulled him upward. The agonizing seconds stretched on, each one a battleground of survival. And it was only when Samuel's foot finally slipped from the predator's jaws that a collective exhale of relief echoed across the deck. But victory came at a harrowing cost. Samuel's severed limb bore witness to the price of his valiant struggle against the jaws of the Great White. The severed leg was a stark reminder of the razor-thin line between life and death in the unforgiving waters. The crew rallied around him. Their swift actions were a testament to their bond and determination to mitigate the damage inflicted by the ruthless predator. Amid the urgency and chaos, the ship's course was swiftly redirected toward the nearest port where medical care awaited. The crew's concern for Samuel's well-being was evident in their actions, and their hearts were united in their shared resolve to ensure his survival. It was a race against time. Their vessel was a lifeline between Samuel and the medical attention he desperately needed. Samuel's journey toward recovery was arduous, marked by pain and perseverance. The physical wound slowly healed, leaving scars forever, reminding him of the price he paid for his encounter with the Deep Blue. Yet the emotional scars ran deeper, etched into his psyche as a testament to the unpredictable nature of the ocean and its inhabitants. 
Despite the trauma he endured, Samuel's tenacity shone brightly. The call of the sea remained irresistible, a siren song that beckoned him back to the waves. With each step towards healing, he found solace and strength in the waters that had once threatened to consume him. His eventual return to the sea was a triumph of spirit over adversity, a testament to the resilience of those who venture into its depths. Samuel's story served as a poignant reminder of the ocean's duality, an awe-inspiring realm of beauty and peril intricately intertwined. It was a reminder that even in the face of danger, humans continue to embrace the challenge, driven by an indomitable spirit that defies the odds. His tale would forever echo across the waves, a testament to the unbreakable bond between man and the unpredictable enigmatic world beneath the surface. 2010. On a crisp sunny morning in California, the picturesque St. Marina Bay beckoned David Coleman, a 27-year-old professional surfer, with its siren call. He had grown up riding the waves of this notorious big wave spot. Known for its formidable reputation, its strong currents and frequent sightings of sharks, as David approached the beach, he felt the familiar excitement bubbling up within him. He had always been drawn to the thrill of conquering the ocean's giants, challenging the waves that roared and crashed along the rugged coast. St. Marina Bay was his sanctuary, where he felt most alive. Clad in his well-worn wetsuit, David made his way to the shoreline. The Pacific Ocean stretched out before him, a vast expanse of deep blue that whispered secrets of both beauty and danger. An electric buzz was in the air as fellow surfers and spectators gathered to witness the daring riders take on the waves. With his board under his arm, David waded into the water, the salty sea breeze tousling his sun-bleached hair. He could feel the power of the waves tugging at him, urging him to ride. The rhythmic sound of crashing waves, mingled with the laughter and cheers of his peers, created an intoxicating symphony of anticipation. The swell that morning was incredible. Sets of towering waves, each more formidable than the last, rolled in from the horizon. David couldn't resist the temptation. He was no stranger to challenge, and this kind of surf separated the mere enthusiasts from the dedicated professionals. Paddling out through the relentless breakers, David's powerful strokes carried him further from the safety of the shoreline. The undertow was unrelenting, but he knew this was the price to pay for the ride of a lifetime. As he reached the outer break, the sea seemed to take a deep breath. He felt an awe-inspiring serenity there, surrounded by the vast water and sky. This was his element, his communion with nature, but he couldn't afford to linger in contemplation. Suddenly a jarring primal force shattered the moment's tranquility. A colossal shadow darkened the water beneath him, and a bone-chilling fear gripped his heart. David's instincts kicked in with a surge of adrenaline. He knew all too well the legends of great white sharks that frequented these waters, but nothing could prepare him for the terror unfolding. The great white shark, a living relic of the prehistoric ocean, rose from the depths, its massive torpedo-shaped body slicing through the water like a razor. It lunged towards David with lightning speed, its cavernous mouth gaping wide. In a desperate, instinctual reaction, David swung his board around, holding it as a flimsy shield between himself and the relentless predator. But the shark was relentless, and in a split second its razor-sharp teeth clamped down on David's right leg and thigh, crushing bone and flesh in its powerful jaws. Pain coursed through David's body, an excruciating searing agony threatening to consume him. His survival instincts roared to life and he fought back with everything he had. His fist pounded the shark's cold, rough skin, and he screamed a wordless cry that echoed across the open water. The battle between man and beast raged for an eternity, a primal struggle for life. Blood stained the water, a macabre testament to the harrowing encounter. With one final desperate effort, David managed to drive his surfboard into the shark's eye, causing the colossal predator to release its deadly grip. At that moment, the great white shark, wounded and disoriented, disappeared beneath the waves. David was left bloodied and battered, floating in the turbulent water. His leg was a mangled mess, the pain excruciating, but he was alive. Miraculously, a nearby surfer saw the commotion and rushed to David's aid. Together they managed to get him onto a rescue board, their hearts pounding with fear and relief. They paddled frantically towards the shore, 
knowing that every precious second counted. At the beach, a crowd had gathered, their cheers and shouts of encouragement fading into gasps of shock as they realized the extent of David's injuries. Paramedics were already on the scene, ready to intervene in this dire emergency. David was swiftly airlifted to a nearby hospital, his life in balance. The trauma team worked tirelessly, battling against the relentless shock and blood loss. The surgery was long and arduous, but they managed to stabilize him. However, it came at a price that would change David's life forever. The news was devastating. David had lost his leg below the knee. The dreams he had nurtured, the waves he had conquered, and the identity he had built around his prowess in the water were all shattered. The reality was harsh, and the psychological wounds ran even more profound than the physical ones. Recovery was a grueling process. David had to learn to walk again, to adapt to life with a prosthetic limb. The waves, once his sanctuary, now seemed like a distant dream, an unattainable memory. His world had been upended, and he felt adrift in a sea of uncertainty. But David's indomitable spirit refused to be crushed. He threw himself into physical therapy, pushing the boundaries of his new reality. With relentless determination, he regained his strength, balance, and mobility. The ocean, he decided, would not define him. He would represent himself. As time passed, David found a new purpose. He became an advocate for shark conservation, using his own harrowing experience to shed light on the importance of protecting these magnificent creatures and their ocean habitat. He traveled the world, sharing his story and message, using his fame as a surfer to draw attention to a cause greater than himself. Life had taken a turn he could never have anticipated, and while losing his leg was a tragedy, it was also a catalyst for profound change. He met people from all walks of life, shared moments of vulnerability, and inspired others with his resilience. Years passed, and though David could no longer ride the waves the same way, he found solace in knowing he had found a new purpose. He had turned a terrifying and life-altering experience into an opportunity to make a difference, to give back to the ocean that had once tried to claim him. And so, the once famous surfer David Coleman, whose name was synonymous with the thrill of conquering the waves, became a different kind of legend. He was the man who had faced the jaws of death in the deep blue and emerged from the depths, not as a victim, but as a force for change and a symbol of resilience. In the bustling city of Sydney, in the year 2017, 35, year old Mark Anderson was immersed in his work as an electrician. The hum of fluorescent lights overhead mingled with the occasional flicker of computer screens, creating a symphony of the modern workplace. Engaged in meticulous scrutiny of a complex electrical schematic, Mark's concentration was interrupted when a knock resonated at the door. Startled, he cast his eyes toward the sound, finding a colleague named Dave. Dave cleared his throat, hesitating briefly before delivering a message that emphasized urgency. The boss required Mark's immediate attention. The boss, Mr. Richardson, was a formidable figure known for his stern demeanor. However, today there was a glint of excitement in his eyes as he beckoned Mark to sit down. Mr. Richardson wore an unusual grin as he leaned forward, delivering a message of great significance. In recognition of Mark's unwavering dedication and exceptional performance, he had been selected for an all-expenses-paid trip to Ningaloo Reef, a location known for its captivating beauty and marine wonders. This was a well-deserved reward for Mark's diligent efforts. Mark's heart swelled with joy. It was a chance to escape the humdrum of office life and embark on an adventure with his family. The scent of success hung in the air, and Mark couldn't help but feel grateful for this unexpected twist in his day. Mark, his loving wife Linda, and their young daughter Lily, embarked on a highly anticipated family vacation to Ningaloo Reef. The air was filled with palpable excitement as they journeyed toward the remote coastal paradise. Ningaloo Reef was an aquatic wonderland, a place where the deep blue sea met vibrant coral gardens. It was home to an array of marine life, including bull sharks, powerful predators with a reputation for aggression and fearsome jaws. As they approached the reef, their anticipation grew. The crystal clear waters revealed a mesmerizing world beneath the surface. Schools of colorful fish danced around the coral gardens, their scales glinting in the sunlight. Mark watched with awe as his daughter Lily marveled at the underwater wonders with wide-eyed amazement. 
The stresses of work melted away, and he couldn't help but share in her sense of wonder. Unbeknownst to the family, two colossal bull sharks silently patrolled the area. Their eyes, dark and piercing, fixated on the family as they circled below. The sharks moved through the water with an eerie grace, their streamlined bodies cutting through the liquid medium like torpedoes. As the family admired a particularly mesmerizing school of fish, the sharks seized their chance. In an instant, the two bull sharks lunged at the unsuspecting family. The attack was swift and merciless. One of the sharks clamped its powerful jaws onto Mark's leg, and a surge of pain unlike anything he'd ever felt coursed through him. The world went dark as he struggled to stay afloat, disoriented and in agony. Linda, watching in sheer horror, felt a crushing dread as she witnessed her husband in the jaws of the sharks. Her heart raced and her ears were filled with the deafening rush of bubbles and commotion. The sea was a battlefield and Linda fought back her fear with every fiber of her being. Her snorkeling gear became a makeshift weapon, and with every strike against one of the sharks, she felt a mixture of terror and fierce determination. The second shark, however, was unrelenting, its dark eyes fixated on its prey. The underwater battle was a chaotic frenzy of splashing bubbles and thrashing fins. Mark, trapped in the grip of the shark, experienced a swirl of emotions. The searing pain in his leg was accompanied by an overwhelming sense of helplessness and fear. Every breath was a struggle, and his thoughts turned to Linda and Lily. The once clear waters turned crimson as Mark's blood mingled with the sea, and Linda fought desperately to free her husband. Her cries for help pierced through the underwater chaos, alerting nearby snorkelers who rushed to their aid. Together, they formed a protective human barrier around Mark, using every ounce of their strength to keep the sharks at bay. Amid the chaos, their young daughter, Lily, managed to swim safely to a nearby boat. Her heart raced as she frantically called for help. Her distress call reached the authorities, triggering the swift response of a nearby rescue team. Back on their boat, Linda and the other snorkelers worked tirelessly to stabilize Mark's condition. An emergency call was placed to request an airlift to the nearest hospital. Mark's life hung in the balance, and each passing minute was crucial. The scent of salt water and the roar of the helicopter's blades filled the air as the rescue team arrived. The medical team at the hospital worked tirelessly to save Mark's life. He underwent multiple surgeries to repair the extensive damage inflicted by the bull sharks. The path to recovery was long and arduous, but Mark's determination to reunite with his family remained unyielding. As the weeks turned into months, Mark was confined to a hospital bed, his body weakened and his leg immobilized. The once devoted electrician now had to confront the physical and emotional scars left by the harrowing shark attack. During his extended recovery, Mark had ample time to reflect on his life and choices. The traumatic experience had brought his family closer together, reinforcing the importance of treasuring moments with loved ones. It was a stark reminder that life's most precious moments often happened away from the demands of work. And Mark was grateful for the wake-up call. Mark's shark encounter was not just about survival. It was a testament to the enduring bond of family. The reward given to him by his company had brought them to Ningaloo Reef, a place that would forever hold a special place in their hearts. September 2009 brought a mild day to the Hepaclo Beach along the Mexican Pacific coast. Valentina Cruz, a 24-year-old surfer passionate about riding the waves, had eagerly anticipated this day. She was joined by her aunt, Maria, and her mother, Isabella, both eager to bask in the sun and sip on margaritas under the warm Mexican sun. Alongside them was Valentina's 23-year-old cousin, Alicia Gomez, who shared her love for surfing. As the women set up their spot on the sun-kissed shore, Valentina and Alicia wasted no time embracing the towering waves of Hepiclo. With surfboards in hand, they paddled out toward the ocean, excitement coursing through their veins. The waves that day were extraordinary, reaching an imposing four meters in height, a perfect canvas for the cousins to showcase their skills. Together for years, Valentina and Alicia had been surfing, and this day would go down in history as one of the most exhilarating and unforgettable moments of their lives. The strong waves carried them into the air and rushed them to the ground. They whooped with delight as the wind swept their giggles away as they ascended the peak. 
A force far more powerful than the seas was about to upend their day's tranquility. Alicia was quickly surrounded by a menacing darkness that appeared out of nowhere with a horrible figure hiding beneath. A predator of the deepest oceans, the great white shark had made its appearance. Alicia's heart pounded with terror as the monstrous jaws erupted from the water. The shark's massive, tooth-filled mouth lunged for her, and she barely had time to react. Valentina, surfing nearby, watched in horror as her cousin was pulled underwater. The shock of the attack sent shockwaves of panic through the cousins. Alicia battled the big white shark's unrelenting jaws underwater for her life. The creature's tremendous fangs tore apart her leg, and the pain pierced her like lightning. She felt herself start to panic. Her screams created a horror environment on the ocean's surface. Valentina's instincts kicked into overdrive as she witnessed the horrifying spectacle unfolding before her. Without a second thought, she propelled herself toward her cousin. Her surfboard held high above her head like a makeshift weapon. The surfboard came crashing down onto the shark's back, causing it to be distracted for some seconds. The distraction briefly diverts the shark's attention, allowing Alicia to escape. She struggled to the surface while gasping for air with all her power. A trembling hand from Valentina was used to help her cousin get on the surfboard. Together, they started the arduous voyage back to land. But Destiny had some different plans. Maria and Isabella laughed and talked on the beach when the terror beyond the waves caught their attention. They laughed until they heard Valentina's frantic screams, which made them gasp in horror. Their eyes widened when they witnessed their girls engaged in a great white shark battle. Maria and Isabella took quick action. They rushed for their cell phones and dialed the Coast Guard's emergency hotline, acting out of panic and desperation. They described the frightening event before them, their voices shaking with fright. Although the dispatcher reassured them that aid was on the way, their suffering grew worse as each second passed. The fight to return to the shore continued as Valentina and Alicia battled through the waves. The great white shark continued to circle menacingly while still alive, its lifeless eyes fixed on its prey. As they escaped from its grasp, the shark became furious. After taking Alicia in its mouth, the shark made a great leap and vanished into the ocean's depths. It all happened so quickly that Valentina froze for two minutes and when she realized the situation, she yelled hysterically. Valentina cried non-stop. She found it unbearable that the shark had taken the life of her favorite cousin. Finally, the Coast Guard arrived as a far-off wail of sirens pierced the air. Their boat, operated by professional rescuers, sped toward her while expertly navigating the choppy waves. The searchlights of the rescue crew cut through the darkness. When the Coast Guard discovered Valentina, she was in an unstable condition. Nobody could find Alicia. Their comprehension of what had occurred took a moment. They raised her from the ocean while leaving their surfboards behind as offerings to the sea. Valentina was still breathing, but she was in disbelief. The great white shark disappeared into the depths, serving as a disturbing reminder of how brutally unpredictable aquatic life can be. Maria and Isabella sped back to Valentina when they reached the shore. The shock of losing her daughter left Alicia's mother comatose. They had tears running down their faces from grief. While Valentina was still alive, her loving cousin's lifeless body was submerged. Valentina and Alicia's mother were being escorted to the hospital for their mental health care as they saw the wild underwater life. They were aware that this day, a day that had begun as a happy adventure, would always serve as a reminder of the loss and grief that had entered their lives. After receiving counseling for several months, Valentina made a sluggish recovery. She chose not to surf anymore. It was a sensible choice because the eerie recollections of Alicia's demise never abandoned her in her dreams. Without her cherished cousin Alicia, she knew she could never go surfing. It was Valentina's way of paying Alicia a small tribute. On a sunny Saturday morning, Munda Beach in Melbourne, Australia, basked in the glow of a promising day. The golden sands stretched along the shoreline, caressed by gentle waves that whispered the allure of the ocean. Families and friends gathered on the beach, embracing the opportunity to enjoy the sea and the sun's warmth. Among them was the Robertson family, a tight-knit foursome who had come to Munda Beach to savor a day of surfing. 
Oliver, the father, and his two teenage children, Charlotte and Oscar, were seasoned surfers. They had honed their skills on these waves and reveled in the excitement surfing brought. Willow, the mother, preferred to stay on the shore, content in watching her family carve through the waves. With their boards in tow, Oliver and his children paddled out into the ocean, the salt-kissed breeze enveloping them. They navigated the waters expertly, finding the perfect spot to catch the rolled-in breaks. Willow stood on the shoreline, her heart filled with pride and a sense of serenity as she watched her family embrace the joy of the sea. As the waves rose and fell, Charlotte and Oscar displayed their agility and skill, riding the surf with grace and confidence. Their laughter and shouts of delight echoed over the water, a testament to their bond as siblings and surfers. Oliver, their father, joined in the exhilaration, carving his way through the waves with the same enthusiasm he had passed on to his children. Munda Beach, with its unspoiled beauty, provided the perfect backdrop for this family's shared passion. The waves glistened in the sunlight, their rhythm a comforting melody that had accompanied countless days of surfing. However, on this otherwise idyllic morning, a shadow of dread began to cast its pall over Willow. She watched from the shore as a large, ominous shape moved beneath the water. The sight sent a chill through her, a sense of impending danger that she couldn't ignore. Willow recognized the shadow for what it was, a bull shark, a predator that struck fear into the hearts of all who understood its deadly nature. Her cries for help were frantic and she waved her arms wildly, hoping to alert her family to the imminent peril. But the ocean, with its vast expanse and the noise of the waves, muffled her voice. Willow's heart raced, knowing the time was slipping away and her family was in grave danger. The bull shark, propelled by its predatory instincts, moved with unnerving speed, closing in on Oliver, Charlotte, and Oscar. As they rode the waves, blissfully unaware of the approaching menace, the shark burst from the water, jaws agape, and struck with brutal force. In an instant, Oscar was knocked from his surfboard, his scream echoing through the surf in the open air. Oliver and Charlotte reacted with lightning speed, abandoning their boards to rush to Oscar's aid. But the shark was faster, its mighty jaws clamping down on Oscar's leg, rendering his cries of agony inaudible beneath the relentless roar of the ocean. The struggle that unfolded in those harrowing moments was a desperate battle for Oscar's life. Oliver and Charlotte fought fiercely to free their son and brother from the savage grasp of the bull shark. Their faces etched with anguish and determination. The shark's strength was astonishing, and its grip on Oscar was unwavering. It dragged the young surfer beneath the waves, plunging the family into an abyss of terror and despair. Their cries for help reverberated through the beach, but the outcome of this brutal encounter was far from certain. As Oliver and Charlotte continued to grapple with the shark, they could feel the fading strength of their beloved Oscar. The salt water churned crimson with the battle's brutality, and their desperation mounted with each passing second. In the distance, Willow stood frozen on the shore, her horror-stricken gaze locked on the unforgiving spectacle unfolding in the water. Her voice was lost amidst the tumult, and she could only watch helplessly as the shark disappeared into the depths, dragging Oscar with it. The ocean, with its vast expanse, swallowed the young surfer, its depths holding the terrible secret of his fate. Willow, her voice choked with sobs, collapsed onto the sandy shore, her tears mingling with the salt water. The beach, once a place of leisure and family bonding, was now a scene of tragedy. The gathered onlookers were left in stunned silence, their faces etched with sorrow as they contemplated the heart-wrenching loss that had unfolded before them. Munda Beach, once a haven of beauty and serenity, had been irrevocably altered by the horrors of that day. As the hours passed and the waves continued to roll in with unrelenting indifference, the Robertson family clung to one another, their grief and pain too profound for words. Willow, once a witness to the joy of her family's surfing adventures, was now a mourner at the shore, forever haunted by the memory of that fateful day when they lost Oscar. The allure of the sea's treacherous depths frequently has us wondering if it's worth exploring them, given the potential hazards that await. A similar event occurred at a film production company in Queensland, Australia's eastern region. It was 1973 and the film studio was determined to improve their film by integrating a realistic ocean scene into the plot. 
The introduction of this ocean water section was intended to boost the action, ensuring that viewers were hooked and left with enough to talk about. However, the actors reacted with hesitation and skepticism to this decision. They were terrified of what the unpredictable ocean had in store for them. They questioned why they risked their lives for a scene that wasn't strictly necessary. Evie Harper was one of these actresses, and she would soon become one of the terrible fatalities of the decision to shoot scenes in the dangerous Australian seas. Like the other actors, Evie hesitated to shoot scenes on the open sea. However, the production firm promised them complete protection and persuaded them that this was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, promising to cover all expenditures and provide luxurious accommodations aboard a first-rate ship. There were suspicions of a romantic relationship between Evie, a rising star on the show, and Oliver Jones, the male lead, and she eventually saw the ocean shoot as a chance to strengthen their bond. The prospect excited her interest, and she welcomed it. The shoot was scheduled to take place in the vast ocean waters between eastern Australia and the South Pacific. The sight of these waters was breathtaking, their shimmering and flowing appeal, where deep blue waves met rough beige sand, captivated everyone. It was like a warm and welcoming blanket, gently caressing the senses. Most actors had never been so close to the sea, let alone experience the excitement of sailing on it. Despite their early reservations, their nervousness quickly led to a great desire to go on this adventurous trip and begin shooting in the ocean's open waters. The enticing prospect of five-star service contributed to their energy, as there was no better place to eat, rest, and have fun than atop the calming waters of the ocean, with its gentle breeze surrounding them and the rest of the group. The movie company's thorough planning was evident as they organized the day efficiently. They got a cozy ship that perfectly suited their budget and extra lifeguards, security personnel, and extra escape boats in case of unanticipated events. They also went to great lengths by renting a popular fast food restaurant to meet the crew's requirements during the filming. Despite the high cost, the company felt it was vital for their grandiose film conclusion. Evie's enthusiasm increased as she held hands with Oliver and boarded the ship with the rest of the team, each carrying the necessary equipment for the shoot and personal requirements. As it was a critical stage, a few representatives of the film board followed them to ensure that everything ran smoothly. The ocean cruise was a fantastic experience. Evie and her crewmates loved every minute, laughing and joking with one another and enjoying romantic moments with their partners. As the shoot time neared, everyone met in the ship's general area to receive instructions on how the scene would play out. The anticipated grand finale involved Oliver rescuing Evie from the movie's antagonist aboard one of the escape boats. They would then return to the ship, sharing a passionate kiss before heading back to the city to get married. The plot promised excitement, and the entire crew eagerly awaited its enactment. To ensure Evie's safety during the water-based action, she was provided a safety jacket to prevent her from drowning, even though she already possessed basic swimming skills. While waiting for Evie's drama to play out, Michael, the antagonist, was already headed out on the ocean on an escape boat. They had no idea that his presence had sparked the interest of a fiery beast beneath the surface. It was a terrifying great white shark with a sleek torpedo-shaped body, a prominent conical snout, and a conspicuous keel at the base of its crescent-shaped tail. Its dark upper torso stood out against its white underbelly. One of the savvy security staff members saw the scenario and focused closely, using binoculars to ensure the safety of the seawaters as the predator quietly monitored the boat from below. A surprising turn of events transpired before the security staff could properly comprehend what they had witnessed and inform others. As Evie's traumatic kidnapping scenario was about to begin, Evie was deliberately thrown into the huge ocean waves. The security personnel's piercing screams of terror filled the air, demanding an immediate halt to the show until the dreadful creature withdrew from the area. However, in a terrifying split second, Evie and the team stared in astonishment as an enormous shark swooped down on her, burying its razor-sharp teeth into her shoulders. Her wild scream saturated the area, Echoing with pure horror, she struggled desperately for her life as she was dragged beneath the surface, battling against the shark's unyielding grip. Evie battled hard, landing ineffective strikes on the shark with her frail wrists and launching powerful kicks with her legs. However, the terrible reality of her situation quickly overcame her. 
Her screams were heightened when sizzling waves of pain exploded from her savage shoulders. She felt her life force drain away gradually, sinking into unconsciousness. She fought the approaching shadows with waning strength. The security team dashed into the frightening waters, pinpointing Evie's position amid the commotion. They struck back with a courageous drive as the monstrous shark attempted to rip her arms apart and grab her lifeless body as prey. They immobilized the fearsome predator with their spears. Evie was quickly rescued from the predator's maw and carefully cradled by Oliver and the health specialists. As they proceeded on a hurried journey back to the city's safety, their prompt attention and essential first aid solutions became her lifeline. Meanwhile, the lifeless body of the wounded shark was carefully taken aboard in the hopes of recouping some commercial value to offset the financial losses caused by the failed movie shoot. Evie astonishingly clung to life by the narrowest of margins, but her survival came at a high price. Her arm was still intact but suffered major neurological damage, rendering it functionally handicapped. What was a source of delicacy and finesse was now only a shadow of its former self. Her difficult path to recuperation lasted months, leaving the movie company with the enormous task of adapting to the challenges presented by her disabled arm. It was unquestionably a miracle that Evie Harper survived this devastating event. On the serene and remote island of Solitude K, nestled in the heart of the Caribbean, a chilling incident unfolded on a fateful summer day. The island's breathtaking natural beauty masked the lurking danger beneath the sparkling waters. Solitude K was a well-kept secret, attracting families searching for a tranquil escape, much like the Thompsons. James, his wife Laura, and their adventurous teenage son Jake. They had chosen this secluded paradise for a dream vacation that would soon unravel into a heart-wrenching nightmare. Under the warm embrace of July 6, 2015, the Thompsons gathered on the pristine shoreline, ready to bask in the sun and embrace the waves. James had a deep affinity for surfing, and the rolling waves gracefully caressing the beach were a surfer's utopia. The gentle symphony of waves against the shore set the stage for what should have been a day of laughter and shared moments. The Thompson family hails from a bustling city on the mainland, seeking a break from the urban chaos. Laura, a dedicated homemaker, yearned for a retreat to reconnect with her loved ones amidst nature's splendor. Jake, a charismatic teenager, was thrilled to embark on an adventure beyond his comfort zone, away from technology and school obligations. With their bags packed, the Thompsons flew to the nearby coastal town and took a small boat to Solitude Cay. The journey offered glimpses of pristine waters and untouched landscapes, igniting their excitement for the upcoming vacation. As they stepped onto the island, a sense of tranquility enveloped them. They settled into a charming beachfront villa, captivated by the serenity surrounding them. On that ill-fated morning, the Thompson family headed to the beach with high hopes for an unforgettable day. An experienced surfer, James was eager to share his passion with his son. Jake, inspired by his father's stories of riding waves, was thrilled to try surfing for the first time. More inclined to relax by the shore, Laura looked forward to capturing precious family moments. Little did they know their peaceful day in paradise would take a horrifying turn, forever altering their lives. As the family set up their spot on the beach, Jake's eyes were fixed on the waves in the distance. The turquoise waters beckoned to him, promising thrilling adventures beneath the surface. At 18 years old, he had inherited his father's love for the ocean and eagerly awaited the chance to ride the waves. With his surfboard under his arm, Jake waded into the inviting waters, feeling the cool embrace of the sea against his skin. The waves were perfect for surfing, gentle enough for beginners but exciting enough to provide an adrenaline rush. The sun bathed the scene in warm light, creating an atmosphere of idyllic bliss. Unbeknownst to the Thompsons, a massive hammerhead shark had been drawn to the shallows by the scent of fish that swam nearby. The predator's powerful senses honed in on the unsuspecting family, and saw an opportunity for an easy meal. As Jake paddled farther from the shore, the hammerhead silently closed the distance, its stealthy approach concealed by the water's surface. Suddenly, chaos erupted as the tranquil scene turned into a heart-stopping nightmare. The water erupted in a frenzy of splashes as the hammerhead shark lunged from below, its immense body breaching the surface. 
In a horrific instant, Jake's surfboard was severed in two and he was flung into the water. The commotion drowned the Thompson's shouts of alarm, their panic palpable as they watched the horrifying scene unfold. The shark's rows of sharp teeth sank into Jake's leg, its mighty jaws clamping down with deadly force. The young surfer's agonized screams filled the air. His struggle against the predator's grip was futile. James and Laura waded into the water, their hearts pounding with fear and determination. Desperation fueled their every move as they tried to reach their son, but the shark's frenzied attack left them helpless. Captain Reynolds, a local fisherman who happened to be nearby, raced to the scene in his boat, armed with a harpoon. With swift precision, Captain Reynolds thrust the harpoon into the water, aiming for the hammerhead's flank. The weapon found its mark, and the shark writhed in pain, releasing Jake from its grasp. The water turned crimson as the predator retreated, its powerful tail lashing in distress. Jake was pulled onto the boat, his legs severely injured, and his body in shock from the traumatic encounter. The Thompsons were inconsolable, their relief at their son's rescue overshadowed by the horror they had witnessed. Captain Reynolds swiftly steered the boat back to the shore, where a makeshift medical team awaited their arrival. Despite their best efforts, Jake's injuries were worse than initially feared. The hammerhead shark's attack had left him with deep lacerations, torn ligaments, and exposed bone on his leg. The risk of infection was a constant concern, as the saltwater and marine life in the ocean posed additional threats to his already compromised health. The once promising vacation had morphed into a harrowing nightmare, casting a shadow over the Thompsons' lives. Jake was immediately transported to Ocean View Beach's small community hospital, where a team of doctors and surgeons were on standby. The medical staff worked tirelessly to clean and disinfect his wounds, removing any debris or potential sources of infection. Jake's leg was carefully examined, revealing the extent of the damage inflicted by the hammerhead shark's brutal attack. After a thorough evaluation, the medical team determined that surgery was necessary to repair Jake's leg's torn ligaments and damaged tissues. The surgery was a delicate and complex procedure, requiring hours of meticulous work to ensure his leg had the best chance of healing. The risk of infection remained a constant concern, and Jake was placed on a regimen of powerful antibiotics to ward off any potential complications. Despite the medical team's dedication and expertise, the injuries Jake sustained were severe. The traumatic experience left both physical and emotional scars. His road to recovery was long and arduous, marked by painful rehabilitation sessions and countless hours of physical therapy. While Jake's determination and youthful resilience fueled his progress, the damage to his leg was irreparable. He was left with limited mobility and chronic pain, forever altering his ability to surf and engage in the activities he once loved. As news of the attack spread throughout Ocean View Beach, the town was gripped by sadness and reflection. The incident served as a stark reminder of the unpredictable nature of the ocean and the potential danger that existed just below the surface. The Thompsons' experience became a cautionary tale, prompting locals and visitors to approach the ocean with greater caution and respect. The once vibrant atmosphere of Ocean View Beach was tinged with somberness, a reminder of the fragility of life and the reality that tragedy could strike at any moment. The town came together to support the Thompsons during their arduous journey, raising funds to assist with medical expenses and showing empathy and compassion. In the aftermath of the attack, the Thompsons faced rebuilding their lives. Jake's dream of becoming an accomplished surfer was shattered by the daily struggle to adapt to his new reality. The family's bond grew stronger as they navigated the emotional aftermath of the traumatic incident, finding solace in one another's company. In 2002, a warm breeze carried the scent of salt and seaweed through the air at Letweben Bay, South Africa. The coastal town was a picturesque haven known for its stunning beaches and crystal clear waters. Clark Reynolds, a 34-year-old surfer with a heart full of adventure, had convinced his wife Linda to join him for a day of riding the waves in this idyllic setting. The morning sun casts a golden glow over the coastline, promising a day of adventure and relaxation. The Letwebine Bay Beach was dotted with tourists and locals seeking the allure of the ocean's embrace. Couples strolled hand in hand, children built sandcastles, and surfers gathered with their boards ready to chase the perfect wave. 
Clark, eager to immerse himself in the thrill of the surf, had persuaded Linda to join him in the water. But as they approached the shoreline, she felt an unshakable sense of unease. The waves that day seemed more formidable and the sea carried an air of unpredictability. She shook her head, choosing to remain on the shore, promising to keep an eye on Clark as he ventured out alone. Dressed in his trusty wetsuit, Clark waded into the clear, inviting waters of the Latuebin Bay Beach. The cool embrace of the sea was a familiar and comforting sensation, as he had surfed here countless times before. With each step, the water deepened, and his excitement grew. Clark paddled out beyond the breaking waves, the rhythmic sound of the surf, and the vast expanse of the ocean surrounding him. The thrill of riding a powerful wave coursed through his veins, and for a moment the world was nothing but the sea and the sky. Unbeknownst to him, beneath the surface, a shadowy behemoth stirred. In the depths of the South African waters, a great white shark, a fearsome sea predator, had sensed the movements and vibrations above. It had been drawn by the scent of salt and the promise of a meal. The great white, a silent and deadly force, approached swiftly. With sudden explosive power, it burst from the water, jaws agape, and clamped down on Clark's chest and shoulder. The attack was ruthless, a catastrophic encounter with nature's apex predator. The sea erupted in a storm of churning water and foam. Clark fought with every ounce of strength and willpower. His desperate struggle to break free from the jaws of death etched in the water and the air. But the great white, relentless in its primal hunger, showed no mercy. Linda, who had been watching from the shore, could hardly comprehend the horrifying scene before her eyes. Her screams echoed across the beach, joining a chorus of gasps and horrified onlookers who had witnessed the shocking attack. Panic gripped the once tranquil coastline, and the situation's urgency was palpable. In those harrowing moments, Clark's fate was sealed. Despite his courageous battle, the Great White's immense power and razor-sharp teeth proved too formidable. The ocean, his playground, became his final resting place. Adrift in the water, the surfboard bore witness to the tragic event, a silent sentinel of a life cut short. Trembling with grief and disbelief, Linda stood paralyzed on the beach, tears streaming down her face. Her beloved husband, the man she had shared her life with, was gone in the blink of an eye. The bright promise of a sunny day at Letuebin Bay had turned into the darkest of nightmares. The authorities were called, and a search was launched to recover Clark's lifeless body from the ocean. The once celebrated surfer, who had chased the waves with a passion that had ignited his soul, would now rest in the arms of the sea he had loved. In the following days, Latuebin Bay mourned the loss of Clark Reynolds, a man whose spirit had been inseparable from the waves. The tragic incident sent shockwaves through the close-knit community of surfers, a stark reminder of the untamed power of the ocean and the creatures that called it home. Linda, who had witnessed the horrific event, grappled with the profound sorrow of losing her husband. The world she had known had crumbled, and the gentle lull of the sea was forever tainted by the memory of that fateful day. She clung to the memories of their shared adventures, the laughter, and the love they had cherished. In the shadow of the tragedy, Letuebin Bay came together as a community to support Linda, and to raise awareness of the importance of coexisting with the ocean's inhabitants. The incident was a sad reminder that nature, with all its beauty and wonder, could also be unforgiving and unpredictable. Every day, Linda struggled to accept her loss, but she found solace in knowing that Clark had pursued his passion until the end. He had ridden the waves, felt the ocean's embrace, and in a way, had become a part of the sea he had loved so dearly. Though the tragedy forever scarred her heart, it was also filled with the enduring love and memories of a man who had lived life to the fullest, despite its most significant challenges. As time progressed, Letuebin Bay remained a natural beauty and allure destination, where the sun continued to kiss the sand, and the waves continued whispering their secrets to those who dared to listen. But the memory of Clark's tragic encounter with the Great White Shark would forever be etched into the history and the heart of this coastal town, a reminder of the powerful forces that both enchant and humble those who venture into the wild embrace of the sea. In 2010, on a picturesque beach in Brazil, the azure waves lapped gently against the golden sands, while a warm breeze rustled the palm trees that lined the shore. It was the ideal setting for a vacation, 
A tourist couple from New Zealand, 31, year old Albert Rod and 33, year old Mary Finn stood on the beach, relishing the beauty of the moment. They had come to Brazil with their families for a tropical getaway, and little did they know that their tranquil evening would soon turn into a nightmare. Albert, a rugged outdoorsman in his early 30s with a passion for scuba diving, had always been captivated by the allure of the ocean. By his side stood Mary, a free-spirited and adventurous soul known for her enchanting emerald eyes that sparkled with the thrill of new experiences. Together, they were a couple that embraced adventure and the natural world. Tonight, they decided to go for a moonlit swim, away from the prying eyes of the other tourists. As they waded into the water, the couple was blissfully unaware of the impending danger. The warm, gentle waters of the Atlantic Ocean suddenly turned dark and mysterious. Unbeknownst to them, a pair of massive bull sharks lurked beneath the surface, drawn by the subtle vibrations of the couple's movement. A cold shiver ran down their spines as they felt something brush against their legs. The once warm waters now turned chilly, sending goosebumps racing up their skin. The playful evening was about to take a horrifying turn. Startled, they exchanged anxious glances, realizing they were not alone in the water. Panic set in as they glimpsed the ominous silhouettes of two bull sharks circling them. The sharks, typically found along the Brazilian coastline, were known for their size and aggressiveness, and their presence here was anything but reassuring. The moonlight cast eerie shadows, making the encounter even more haunting. The sharks, with their dark, sleek forms, circled closer and closer, their dorsal fins cutting through the water like daggers. The sharks closed in and the situation grew dire. Albert and Mary had to do what it took to survive this harrowing ordeal. With a surge of adrenaline, they started swimming back towards the shore, their movements erratic and fueled by terror. The sharks chased them relentlessly, their dark, torpedo-like forms slicing through the water with terrifying speed. The once refreshing sea now felt like a relentless foe, and every stroke was a desperate bid for their lives. In the water, the situation became a relentless battle for survival. Albert and Mary's hearts pounded, their lungs screamed for air, and the sharks were relentless in their pursuit. The cold depths seemed to reach up and clutch at them, their limbs aching from the frantic swim. The moonlight's reflection on the water's surface played tricks on their vision, making it all the more difficult to gauge the distance to safety. As the sharks closed in, Mary felt a searing pain in her leg, and Albert could hear her scream. One of the sharks had managed to bite her leg and her cry echoed through the night. The water around them turned crimson and the stinging pain in Mary's leg was excruciating. Despite the agony and panic, Albert didn't let go of Mary's hand, and they continued their desperate struggle to reach shallower waters near the shore. The sharks, frustrated and hungry, followed them relentlessly, snapping their jaws dangerously close to their prey. The metallic taste of blood lingered in the water. Finally, with every ounce of strength and determination, Albert and Mary managed to reach the shallower waters near the shore. Mary's leg was badly injured, and Albert was in shock. The other tourists quickly realized the severity of the situation and rushed them to a nearby hospital for immediate medical attention. Mary underwent surgery to repair the damage to her leg, and Albert was treated for shock and exhaustion. The nights that followed were restless and filled with nightmares of circling sharks and the taste of salt water. The aftermath of the attack, the Brazilian authorities, who were well aware of the presence of bull sharks in their waters, conduct investigations to ensure the safety of the beachgoers. Safety measures were put in place to prevent future encounters, such as installing warning signs and increasing patrols. The couple's experience had a profound impact on their lives, they realized the fragility of life and the importance of cherishing every moment. Albert and Mary left Brazil with a newfound respect for the ocean and a shared determination to live life to the fullest. In 1999, Lesoka Island in South Africa beckoned with its natural beauty and untamed waves, a destination that had become a magnet for surfers worldwide. Musa Thompson, a 37-year-old surfer from the United Kingdom, had come to this pristine island paradise with his family for a well-deserved vacation. The idyllic destination was known for its breathtaking landscapes, clear waters, and, unfortunately, 
its reputation for being home to great white sharks. The sun painted the sky with hues of pink and gold as Musa paddled out into the azure waters of Lasoka Island. His surfboard glided over the gentle swells, and the ride was exhilarating and smooth for the first few minutes. His wife Sarah and their two children, Beth and James, watched from the shore, their faces lit up with excitement. They clapped and cheered for Musa, who seemed to be in his element. The undulating and majestic waves provided the perfect canvas for Musa's surfing skills. He rode the swell, his heart full of joy and gratitude, and his family's enthusiasm from the shore filled him with pride. He felt he was on top of the world, celebrating life and the bond he shared with his loved ones. But a silent and relentless predator lurked in the deep waters of Lasoka Island. Great white sharks, the ocean's apex predators, were known to frequent these shores. Their presence was an ever-present risk, a shadow that hung over the island's breathtaking beauty. They were drawn by the scent of seals and the movements of potential prey. Suddenly, without warning, the tranquility of the moment shattered. Musa's world was upended when a monstrous great white shark, a living relic of the prehistoric sea, lunged from beneath the water. Its colossal form breached the surface with astonishing speed, its cavernous maw snapping shut around Musa with brutal force. The sea around Musa became a maelstrom of chaos. The water churned into a crimson froth as the great white shark's powerful jaws and teeth tore through flesh and bone. Musa fought with every ounce of strength and willpower, his body thrashing in a primal struggle for survival. The once serene ocean had become an arena of life and death. Sarah and their two children watched on the shore in disbelief and terror. The joyous cheers that had filled the air moments before were replaced by screams of horror and despair. They shouted for help, their voices carrying across the water and into the island's heartland. The call for assistance reached the island's authorities, and a frantic operation was launched to rescue Musa from the predator's jaws. As the minutes ticked by, every second was precious. Sarah and the children clung to each other, their tears and prayers merging with the anguished cries of those who had witnessed the horrifying spectacle. When help finally arrived, it was with a sense of urgency and dread. Tragically, by the time they reached Musa, it was too late. The surfer who had reveled in the waves was now lifeless, his body floating on the ocean's surface, a victim of a primal encounter that had unfolded with unimaginable swiftness. Sarah, Beth, and James, who had watched the unthinkable tragedy unfold, were left to grapple with grief beyond words. Their husband and father, a man who had embarked on this vacation to celebrate life and the joys of family, had met a horrific and untimely end. The island, a place of beauty and adventure, had become a haunting memory. The community on Lasoka Island mourned the loss of Musa Thompson, a visitor whose life had been claimed by the sea's fierce and unpredictable nature. The incident was a stark reminder of the ever-present risks of pursuing the call of the waves and the need for heightened vigilance in waters known for shark activity. For Sarah and her children, life would never be the same. They carried the weight of a tragedy that had unfolded before their eyes and the once joyful memories of their family vacation had turned into a haunting nightmare. In the following days and weeks, they sought solace in each other and the support of a community that had witnessed their heart-wrenching loss. Lasoka Island, with its striking beauty and natural wonders, continued to draw visitors from around the world. But the memory of Musa's fatal encounter with the Great White Shark would forever be etched into the island's history and the hearts of those whom the tragedy had touched. It stood as a poignant reminder of the awe-inspiring and formidable forces of the sea, a realm where adventure and beauty coexisted with danger and the stark reality of nature's untamed power. In the remote wild waters of Australia's Great Barrier Reef, an American YouTuber named Jack Douglas embarked on an audacious adventure in 2021. Jack, a native of Colorado, had grown up surrounded by the rugged beauty of the Rocky Mountains. Over the years, Jack had built a YouTube channel around his daredevil escapades. He had become known for sharing breathtaking vistas, from the snow-capped peaks of the Rockies to the dense jungles of Central America. But what genuinely set him apart was his ability to get up close and personal with nature's most awe-inspiring creatures. 
His encounters with grizzlies, giant anacondas, and great white sharks had captivated millions of viewers. They were drawn not only to the stunning imagery, but also to Jack's genuine passion for the untamed world. The challenge he was facing today was different. It had been issued by one of his dedicated subscribers and was straightforward yet fraught with danger to swim with bull sharks in the deep azure waters of Australia. Jack was no stranger to taking risks, but this challenge was a leap into the unknown. The lure of the unpredictable was irresistible, even if it came with undeniable peril. The location was a breathtaking stretch of the Coral Sea, known for its crystal clear waters and vibrant marine life. As Jack descended beneath the surface, the initial moments were accompanied by the soft hum of the ocean, a soothing symphony that enveloped him the gentle swaying of the coral formations resembled a carefully choreographed dance. The heat of the Australian sun bore down on him as he ventured further from the safety of the boat. The allure of the challenge was undeniable, but so was the fear that gripped him. He couldn't escape the haunting stories of shark attacks he'd heard over the years. The anticipation of an encounter with the bull sharks hung over him like a storm cloud, creating a palpable tension in the water. Jack wore a small underwater camera to capture the daring adventure for his viewers. It had become a familiar companion on his journeys. But at that moment, the camera seemed like a weight pulling him deeper into the abyss. The depths were inky black below and Jack's heartbeat quickened as the underwater world unveiled itself. The silence of the deep was profound, punctuated only by the sound of his breathing through the regulator, a rhythmic reminder of his isolation in the watery realm. Minutes turned into a nerve-wracking eternity, and then it happened. Emerging from the darkness below, two monstrous bull sharks glided toward him with malevolent grace. Their presence was intimidating, their dorsal fins slicing through the water like knives. Jack watched them approach, their movement synchronized, their predatory intent unmistakable. As the sharks circled him, their muscular forms passed within arm's reach. He could see their rows of serrated teeth and the malevolence in their cold, unfeeling eyes. His heart raced and his body tensed, knowing that any sudden move could provoke a deadly attack. The sensation of his heart pounding seemed to echo through his entire body, a relentless rhythm in the face of danger. With each pass, the sharks ventured closer, their eyes never leaving him. The sensory details were overwhelming, the subtle brush of their dermal denticles as they slid by the low-frequency hum of their movements reverberating through the water, and the unmistakable metallic scent of salt water filling his nose, a pungent reminder of the predatory presence surrounding him. Jack's pulse pounded in his ears, and he knew he had to stay composed. But then, without warning, they struck. Jack felt the agonizing pressure of their teeth sinking into his arm and leg, and pain coursed through him like fire, every nerve ending ablaze with searing discomfort. In that harrowing moment, he was face to face with the savage jaws of nature, unable to escape. The danger was real, and his life hung by a thread. The shark showed no sign of releasing their grip. Jack knew he had to do something drastic, his mind racing as he fought to keep his wits about him. Summoning all his strength and desperation, he began to kick and thrash. Using his free arm, he punched the sharks in the snout with every ounce of power he could muster. The sharks, momentarily disoriented by the unexpected attack, were forced to release their hold, their frustration evident in the way they darted back, still menacing but momentarily foiled. With his injuries causing searing pain, Jack kicked and swam as fast as his battered body could manage, making a desperate bid for the surface. The sharks, enraged and frustrated, continued to pursue him, their formidable presence never more apparent. Jack's vision blurred with each stroke, but his determination was unwavering as he neared the surface, he could see the silhouette of the boat above. The crew, alerted by the commotion, hurriedly extended a ladder into the water. With a final burst of energy, Jack reached the ladder, his body trembling and his vision narrowing. The crew pulled him aboard with a mixture of shock and relief. Jack's injuries were severe and his arm and leg were mangled, but he was alive. The encounter had left him shaken and humbled, and his subscribers had witnessed a life-and-death struggle with nature's most formidable predators. Jack would go on to share his story, emphasizing the importance of respecting the untamed forces of the natural world. The bull sharks, still lurking in the Australian waters, 
remained the undisputed rulers of their domain, and Jack had survived their perilous challenge, forever marked by the experience. Hanging Beach, California, was known for its serene beauty, the perfect spot for a family day at the shore. On this particular summer day, the sun hung high in the sky, casting shimmering ripples on the cerulean waters. The Turner family, composed of Mark, his wife Sarah, and their two children, Emma and Ethan, couldn't have picked a better day to enjoy the waves. An experienced surfer, Mark was excited to share his passion with his family. He had just caught a magnificent wave when the unthinkable happened. A great white shark, its dorsal fin slicing through the water like a knife, surged up from below, its massive jaws clamping down on Mark's surfboard. The impact sent Mark tumbling into the water. Mark's world fell into black as the salty ocean swallowed him. His leg burned with pain, and he could feel the shark's strong jaws ripping through his surfboard just inches away. Despite the panic coursing through him, his survival instincts took over. He struggled to release his leg from the board's debris, while blood stained the water around him. From the shore, Sarah, Emma, and Ethan were terrified to watch their happy day suddenly become a nightmare. The breaking waves drowned out Mark's calls for aid, but his family had witnessed the awful attack and understood they needed to move quickly. While crying, Sarah called the Coast Guard security force. Mark struggled to keep afloat as the minutes passed, his hurt legs stinging. Even though he could no longer see the shark, he knew it was still around. He had to come up with a plan right away. He gathered the last of his strength and assessed the situation. The ocean surrounded him in an infinite circle with the shoreline seeming like a far-off dot. Mark knew he needed to keep his cool and use less energy. He was getting farther away from the shark's first striking area with each stroke. His thoughts raced as he tried to recall the fundamental survival skills he had previously mastered. The Turner family was in agony on the beach, waiting for the authorities to respond. The dispatcher assured Sarah that help was coming, but each passing second felt like an eternity. Thanks to his sheer willpower, Mark had created a temporary tourniquet out of a piece of his surfboard leash. Although it stopped the blood in his leg, he knew he couldn't continue to float. His attention turned to his family as he kept swimming toward the far shoreline. He had to live to protect them. Time went on, and Mark's strength waned. His limbs felt like lead, and his vision blurred. Desperation clawed at him. Suddenly, the shadow of the great white shark reappeared beneath him. It circled, its dead eyes fixated on him, its presence a chilling reminder of his peril. Mark cried underwater in a frantic guttural scream reverberating through the waves. It was his only weapon against the unrelenting predator, and he hoped his family on the coast would hear. The shark turned away after being briefly spooked. At Hanging Beach, the emergency response team had already arrived, and Sarah, Emma, and Ethan pointed them toward the area where Mark had last been seen. As they observed the rescuers board a boat and set off, they experienced both hope and horror. The shark's circling grew more erratic as Mark continued to swim toward the shore. It seemed increasingly frustrated by its inability to close in for the kill. Mark's vision dimmed, and his limbs ached beyond endurance. Just when he felt he could go on no longer, a powerful engine voice from a rescue boat cut through the air. When the rescuers saw Mark's writhing form, they quickly hauled him aboard. They had arrived on schedule. Mark's family watched in exhilaration as he was carried back to the shore alive despite having a pale face and a broken leg. The great white shark was stopped in its pursuit and vanished into the depths, leaving the Turner family with eerie memories of its disappearance. After being transported to the hospital, Mark underwent surgery and started the protracted road to recovery. The Turner family still bears the mental and physical scars of the ordeal. They had seen firsthand the tremendous force of nature and the grit of a man fighting to survive. The boundary between life and death had been marked in the sand at Hanging Beach, which had formerly stood for tranquility. As Mark lay in his hospital bed, he found solace that he had returned to his family. Their bond had deepened and they knew they were stronger together despite the horrors they had faced. The great white shark had left its mark, but had not taken their hope or love. On a warm, sunny day in the summer of 2003, Barty Beach in Sydney was alive with the rhythmic sounds of crashing waves and the joyous laughter of beachgoers. 
Families and friends gathered along the shoreline, basking in the golden rays of the sun. Among the crowd was the Lee family, who had come to enjoy a day of sun and surf. Benjamin Lee, a 20-year-old avid surfer, had always connected deeply to the ocean. Barty Beach was known for its pristine waters and perfect waves, making it a haven for surfers. Its sandy shores stretched for miles, framed by rocky cliffs and lush vegetation. The salt-scented breeze carried the promise of adventure, and as Benjamin waxed his board, he couldn't help but feel the excitement building inside him. Benjamin's family watched from the shoreline, their hearts filled with pride and worry. Something was captivating about the sight of their son and brother taking on the mighty waves, a view they had witnessed countless times before. But today, an undercurrent of anxiety lingered in the air. The sun was now at its zenith, casting a brilliant reflection over the azure sea. Benjamin, clad in his vibrant wetsuit, paddled out toward the break, his surfboard bobbing gracefully on the water's surface. With each stroke, he felt the cool embrace of the ocean, a sensation that always invigorated him. Out in the distance, the waves were building, curling into perfect cylinders that promised exhilarating rides. Benjamin's heart raced with anticipation as he waited for the right moment to catch the wave that would carry him back to shore. He knew the ocean well, or so he thought. As Benjamin scanned the horizon for the ideal wave, an unusual unease began to stir. He couldn't quite grasp it, but something felt different today. It was as though the ocean itself was whispering a warning, a subtle message that he couldn't decipher. Unbeknownst to Benjamin, lurking beneath the pristine surface of the water, a massive bull shark was also on the hunt. Drawn by the commotion of surfers and the promise of an easy meal, the shark moved silently its powerful body slicing through the water with uncanny stealth. The Lee family standing together on the beach watched Benjamin with bated breath. Their anxiety was now impossible to ignore, and their gaze was fixed on the lone figure of their beloved surfer. His younger sister Lily clung to her mother's hand, her wide eyes filled with excitement and fear. Just as Benjamin positioned himself to catch a wave, the shark's primal instincts took over. With a swift, lethal movement, it lunged from beneath the water, jaws agape, and clamped down on Benjamin's leg. The force of the attack sent Benjamin toppling from his board, his cry of pain silenced by the roar of the surf. The shark's savage grip on Benjamin's leg was unrelenting, and with terrifying strength it dragged him beneath the surface. The salt water churned crimson as Benjamin's lifeblood mingled with the sea. Benjamin's family stood frozen in horror, unable to comprehend the nightmare unfolding before them. They could only watch, powerless, as the ocean claimed their son and brother. As Benjamin was pulled deeper into the depths, his mind raced with a flurry of thoughts and emotions. The pain radiating from his leg was excruciating, and he struggled to maintain his composure. He knew that his chances of survival were rapidly diminishing with each passing moment, but a fierce determination to fight for his life coursed through his veins. The underwater world was a realm of shadows and muted colors, and Benjamin's senses were heightened in the face of danger. He could feel the shark's immense power and the relentless pull of the current. With every ounce of strength he could muster, he attempted to free himself from the shark's vice-like grip. Back on the beach, Benjamin's family was not alone in their shock and terror. The other beachgoers who had witnessed the horrifying attack had gathered. Their voices raised in a cacophony of disbelief and fear. Some dialed emergency services, desperately pleading for help. Minutes felt like hours as Benjamin and the bull shark fought for survival beneath the waves. With his heart pounding and adrenaline surging through his veins, Benjamin clung to the belief that he could outwit the relentless predator. But the ocean, with its vast depths and unfathomable mysteries, was a relentless opponent. Benjamin's lungs burned for air, and his strength waned as he grappled with the shark. His vision grew blurry, and his consciousness teetered on the edge of darkness. At the water's edge, the Lee family and the gathered onlookers held their breath, their eyes straining to catch any glimpse of Benjamin. The paramedics and rescue teams, alerted by the frantic calls for help, were racing toward the scene, but time was slipping away. In the depths of the ocean, Benjamin's struggle was nearing its end. His body weakened and his thoughts turned to his family, the faces of his loved ones flashing before his eyes. As the battle raged, the ocean began relinquishing its grip on Benjamin. 
With a final burst of strength, he broke free from the shark's jaws. He pushed himself toward the surface, gasping for air, his survival instinct prevailing against all odds. Benjamin's emergence from the water was a moment of relief and disbelief. He was battered, his body bearing the scars of the harrowing encounter, but he was alive. The beach erupted in cheers and applause as his family rushed to his side, their faces wet with tears of joy and relief. The bull shark, having lost its prey, vanished back into the depths of the ocean, a silent, enigmatic predator that continued to haunt the waters. Benjamin's encounter with the beast had left an indelible mark on him, a reminder of the fragility of human life in the face of nature's incredible power. In the days and weeks that followed, Benjamin's story of survival became a testament to the strength of the human spirit. He endured a long and arduous recovery, both physical and emotional, but his love for the ocean remained undiminished. His family, forever marked by the day they nearly lost him, held on to the gratitude that their son and brother had been spared from the jaws of the deep. Barty Beach, with its azure waters and golden sands, continued to be a haven for surfers and beachgoers. The ocean, as majestic and alluring as ever, retained its enigmatic allure. Benjamin Lee's story, a tale of resilience and survival, served as a powerful reminder of the unpredictable and untamable nature of the sea.